Today I'm going to show you how to take your label that you create in either Illustrator or in Gravit Designer and use Photopea or you can also use Photoshop of course to turn it into a realistic looking image as if it was actually on the surface of the object. So right now I found a picture um, from one of our copyright free sources, unsplash.com is where I found this bottle, and I'm going to be creating a label for this bottle in this tutorial. So I've already actually designed the label itself, but before I bring it into the program, you want to look at the image and make sure that the image is the color, the value, everything that you want it to be for your final design. Right now I can tell that um, it's a little bit grayed out, has a little bit of a blue tinge to it. So I'm gonna adjust this first. I'm gonna grab my background layer and drag it down to the new layer button. And from there I can do my basic adjustments. Um, so going to our levels option first, using your histogram, dropping down to red, green, and blue. You can make your standard adjustments here, make sure everything is accurate dragging in towards the base of the mountain with each of the little icons here. You're ready, big difference. It gets rid of those really grayish um, values, increases the contrast of the image. It looks more photorealistic. And then I can also open up my curves menu, which I really don't think I need after this. I can see that I have really nice blacks and whites in my design. It shows um, a high range of value, but if I did want to adjust that any further, remember you can always drag using the S pattern on your histogram. So going up into the left if you needed to add any more highlights and down to the right if you need to increase your shadows. If you're happy with your designs, you can check them by looking at your visibility icon here. If I like both of those, I can merge them together with Control E. Looking at my before and my after, I'm definitely happy with my total result, result afterwards as well. So Control E one more time to merge those all together. Now I'm gonna bring in my label so I can add it on. And I actually have it saved right here on the desktop. So I'm gonna drag and drop it in. You can also open it through the program, whatever is easier for you. And I'm going to move that down on top of my bottle. And right now, since I dragged mine in, notice there's a little icon here that's telling me that I need to rasterize this. It's an object file. So if I right click on that layer here and I go to rasterize, it's going to get rid of the little icon. I can now edit it like a normal photo. Okay, so first step is to resize this. If I go to edit, transform, and scale, control T is the shortcut if you're using Photoshop. Hold shift and stretch from the corner if you're using Photo P. In Photoshop, you do not need to hold shift to keep it proportionate. Actually, it will make it disproportionate if you hold the shift key down. And I'm gonna change this to be the size that I want. And since I'm not completely wrapping this around the entire bottle, I don't have to have such a large amount of space here. So what I'm going to do is grab my rectangle select tool. It's your marque tool in Photoshop and just select part of this label, the part that I want to keep. And if I go up to select inverse, which is select opposite and hit delete on my keyboard, I can remove any of that extra space around the outside. Click one more time with that selection tool on the outside or any of your selection tools to deselect. All right, now I want to warp it around the outside of that um, object there. So if I make sure I'm on that layer, go to image, sorry, over to edit, down to transform and over to warp. I can use these edges here to pull into the shape of the bottle. And really this is gonna work for any shape that you wanna make it, not just the shape of the bottle, to whatever angle you want your object to appear sitting on the actual object that you find. Okay. 
And there I have it, although it looks way too flat, it looks way too cartoon-like right now. So I do wanna add a little bit of highlights and shadows on this. There's a few different ways to do that. Um, if you remember back to where the highlights and shadows were originally underneath, there was a highlight going down the side matching up with this one down the right-hand side of the bottle. So I'm gonna do something similar. I'll start by making a new layer, clicking the new layer button next to the trash can. And on that new layer, I'm going to grab again using my marque tool or rectangle select tool in here and draw where that highlight is going to go down the bottle. And if I grab my paint bucket tool, it might be hidden underneath your gradients, grab just a solid white value and drop that in. I can then on that new layer go to filter, blur, and over to Gaussian blur. And you can blur out that highlight as much as you want, so something similar to what the one was on the top. And then I can also, on my layer over here, adjust the opacity if it's a little bit too harsh. It is going across the label, not on the glass of the bottle, so it's not gonna have that extreme of a shine. Turn it down a little bit. And I'm also gonna go back to my original layer where my label is here. And using my burn and dodge tools, which you can find on your toolbar over here, the dodge tool looks like a little lollipop, the burn tool looks like a hand, and use the burn tool to add in some of your shadows. So you can use your bracket keys on your keyboard right above the enter return button to make it bigger or smaller. And you can see if I just start coloring right now, it's going to make a really extreme shadow. I don't want it that extreme. I'm going to step backwards really quick. You want to change your exposure down. Um, I'm going to do it at 10% so it's a little bit lighter. You can adjust depending on what value you're adding the shadow to, mid-tones, shadows, or highlights. Mid-tones is going to work well for this one. And I would also recommend turning the hardness of your brush way down. That way you get a nice soft edge. So now I'm going to see just little by little adding that shadow in versus that extreme shadow that I got the first time. You're doing it right if you barely notice it, just building it up little by little, that's going to look the most realistic in the long run. Now you can really see that shadow starting to come in after a few swipes I'm letting go, just kind of coloring on top of that shape. Because it's on a new layer, I'm not touching my background layer at all, so that works out really nice. I can do the same thing with my dodge tool then, grabbing the dodge, I can see that there's a little bit of a highlight that comes up here from the bottom. I'm going to turn that exposure down again before I start coloring. Let's do that at 15. Turn the hardness down. Maybe I can add in a little bit of the shine. You can also add another marque tool to add the shine to if you want it to go across the whole thing. Okay, so you can already see that looks way more photorealistic than when we started with just the cartoon type edge. Mm -hmm.